It's time to thin our seedlings and mix up our nutrient solution on this episode of Look Ma, No Soil. Welcome back, my name is Boss. I'm a gardener and a lover of all things spicy. If you're new here, this is episode three in a series teaching you the basics of passive hydroponics. Today we're gonna be thinning out these seedlings, mixing up the nutrient solution that we need, and then putting these into their containers so that they're ready to grow. Let's get started. So we ended up with pretty good germination. Really, really good germination. So I've got a lot of lettuce seedlings that I'm not gonna keep. We've also got a few extra tomatoes and peppers that are just going to have to go. We only want one plant per Rockwell cube in this situation so that they can get all the nutrients they need from their container, not be competing with another plant. So to get started, I'm going to take my freshly sanitized pointy pruners. If you don't have a pair of these, you can use scissors. You can use your fingernails. Anything that will let you easily clip these stems down at the base of the plant, right where it comes out of the rock wool. We're going to do that one so that we can kill off the seedling for sure. But if you pull these out, you risk maybe damaging the roots or pulling out the one that you want to keep. So it's much easier, in my opinion, to just give a little snip. So in this case, I'm going to aim for the lettuce seedlings that are in the middle here and try and get one good one out. So to start, I can definitely clear out some of these guys. Again, I'm just going to clip them right at the surface. No big deal. So let's do this a bunch of times. So you can see now I've got it down to just one lettuce seedling per Rockwell cube and just a little bit of carnage on the surface there. I picked the ones that were closest to center that also looked the healthiest, meaning they had the best green color to them. And in this case, this one was already starting to form its first set of true leaves in the center there. You can see it was a little bit further along than the others. That makes me think it's gonna be a hardy grower. So I'm gonna do the same thing and thin out my tomato and pepper seedling so that I have just one left um, the best looking one, hopefully out of the group. Again, they don't have to be dead center. That makes it slightly easier for weight distribution. But if you've got a really good looking one that's off to the side, save that one and snip the ones in the middle if they don't look as healthy. If they all look healthy, I'm just gonna stick with the one in the middle for aesthetic and balance purposes. So let's clip these tomatoes out. Same thing with the peppers. I had three pop up. I'm gonna keep the one in the center hole. It looks perfectly healthy. The others do as well. So there you can see it. We've got one plant in each of our Rockwell cubes, two of the lettuce, one tomato, and one pepper. This pepper actually has surprisingly tiny cotyledons, or the embryonic leaves that you see there. So I'm interested to see how this variety turns out. It also looks a little bit purple, so I'm expecting it to be pretty. All right, so now that we have our seedlings thinned out, all we have left is to make up our nutrient solution, fill our containers, and transfer the rock wool to the net cups. Let me show you how we do that. To mix our nutrients, it's really simple. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is follow the directions on the bottle. Not what I say necessarily, unless you're using this exact nutrient. I look on the back here and it tells me to use one teaspoon per gallon for a non-recirculating hydroponic system. We are gonna be doing non-recirculating hydroponics, crack key, and so in this case, we're gonna use one teaspoon or five milliliters per gallon of water. I have a five gallon bucket sitting here next to me I'm gonna make a five gallon batch because I know I have a lot of containers to fill. I use a lot of hydroponic nutrient in my indoor garden because I feed even my soil plants with it. It's just an easy to uptake nutrient for your plants, right? So I always make five gallon batches. You can make a one gallon batch, two gallon batch, 10 gallon batch. Just multiply five milliliters by however many gallons you have. That's how much you'll need to add. So we're gonna be using the Grow Formula Nutrient from Dynagrow to make this five gallon batch. This is a 795 on the NPK, that's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Um, this is really formulated to help leafy growth on your plants, help them get established. Things like the lettuce, they're only gonna get the Grow Formula. There's also a bloom formula that the pepper and the tomato will like a little bit more. I'm gonna be feeding those plants that mix 
after they get a little bit of growth to get them started. Mixing this up, like I said, is really simple. Since I have five gallons, that means I need five teaspoons or 25 milliliters to do the math, right? Because it's five milliliters or one teaspoon per gallon. I'm going to take my dropper here and just add it. So that's one teaspoon, two, three, four, and five. I'm going to give the dropper a quick rinse here, but the goal really is to just add your nutrient and then stir it very, very well, right? You want to really make sure that gets mixed in. Put the lid back on. I'm accident prone. Let's not have any spills. I am also going to take just, this is just plain water in this cup and rinse out my dropper just to make sure that I get any extra nutrient solution out of that before I reuse this dropper to adjust the pH. I've got a big spoon here. I'm gonna stir this bucket for about two to three solid minutes, get it really well mixed. So hang on. All right, I've got my nutrients mixed into the water, but there's one final step that's really important for hydroponics and that's checking and adjusting the pH. So the pH scale goes from one to 14, seven being neutral, Less than seven is considered an acidic solution. Higher than seven is considered a basic solution or alkaline. What we're really shooting for here is somewhere between five and a half and six and a half. I like to aim right about 5.9 for my pH. It seems to work really well, especially for peppers. And I grow a ton of peppers. So I'm gonna use my pH meter here. I happen to have an Apera that works really well for me. Um, you can use pH testing strips if you prefer. Really anything will work as long as you trust it and you calibrate it. So if you get an electronic meter, make sure that you calibrate it. Otherwise, it's not gonna help you out. I'm gonna turn this guy on, put it in the water, and it tells me right now that my pH is sitting at right about 6.7. So I need to lower that quite a bit. So all I'm gonna do here is take my pH down. Again, I have a very large bottle of this. It comes in much smaller quantities. I do a lot of hydroponics. You don't need the big bottle to get started. I'm gonna take my dropper. This stuff is very, very potent. It takes, I would say typically, about one milliliter per gallon to move things seven to eight tenths of a point. So I'm trying to go down about seven to eight tenths of a point. I've got five gallons. So I'm gonna start with five milliliters and see how it goes. So I've added that, rinsed off my dropper a little bit here, make sure I got it all out. I'm gonna rinse my dropper in the water and I am very quickly gonna put the lid back on the pH down. This is acid. This is very strong acid. Don't splash it on your skin. Uh, for those that are watching and saw me using a drill last time without goggles or gloves, I'm sorry, but uh, I should probably have had at the very least gloves on here to protect my skin in case there was any splash of this acid. It'll get you. It, it burns your skin pretty good, trust me. So we've added that to the water. And let's give it a quick stir. We want to get that distributed throughout to really lower the pH of this entire bucket. All right. Now that that's mixed in, let's give it another test with the pH meter. And it's actually still reading a little bit high at 6.4. Technically, that's within the range, 6.3. But I'm going to drop it just a little bit more for my own peace of mind. pH tends to rise over time in nutrient solution too, so just because we've checked it this once doesn't mean it's gonna stay exactly this way once you get it into your containers. So one thing that you're gonna to wanna to be ready to do on a regular basis, especially if you start seeing problems with your plants, is check that pH. So I really like having a reliable pH meter. So let's just go ahead and drop this with a couple more milliliters. Clean our dropper, the lid back on the pH down. We'll give this one more good stir, and I think we should be just about set. Okay, let's check it now. And we're sitting right at 6.0. I'm gonna call that good. pH is all set on our nutrient solution. I'm gonna show you how I fill my containers, but you can do this any way possible. You can use a cup. If you're making smaller batches of nutrients than a five gallon bucket, um, I highly recommend using one gallon jugs. Really easy to pour out of, easy to shake up and keep them mixed. So you've got options. I happen to have little battery powered pumps that I put on top of the lids here that will dispense nutrient for me hands-free. I do this because 
I'm lazy. I've told you this before. I want my containers to fill themselves. So let me show you how that works. We'll get our containers filled, our rock wool into the net cups, and our plants will be ready to grow. So we're gonna fill this amber jar first, just to show you how it works, because it's probably easier to see since it's clear. Ish. This is where the tomato is going to grow, right? That micro dwarf tomato that we're growing, the red robin variety. So this is the pump that I mentioned. These work pretty easily. So all you really have to do here, there's a button on top. This has a hose going down into the bucket. And it's going to start dispensing that nutrient. So I can set these down. I know this will dispense about a half a gallon before it automatically shuts off. That pump will only run for so long. So for some of my other containers, I can just start it and walk away. In this case, I'm going to stop the nutrient flow right when it gets to the bottom of that net cup. So I splashed a little bit and made a mess. But one thing that I didn't mention in the first episode that's essential hydro gear is a towel. So keep a towel around at all times. You are, in fact, dealing with a whole bunch of liquid, right? I happen to use one that the dog chewed up. So now it's my garden towel, right? I've got the nutrient solution filled in here just so that it's at the bottom of the net cup and maybe an eighth of an inch into the cup itself. All right, so this really, it's pretty darn simple. I'm gonna take my rock wool from our seed starting tray here and into the net cup it goes. Typically I'll wait a little bit longer on something like a tomato or a pepper until I see that first tap root starting to come out of the bottom of the rock wool. I'm willing to bet that in a couple of days, this will have a root coming out the bottom, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, set it in the net cup, gently slide it into place. You don't wanna crush your rock wool because then you're closing all the gaps that hold the air that make it a great growing medium and it won't be as easy for your roots to push through. The rock wool cube is placed into the net cup. You can see the little baby tomato seedling in there, happy as can be, and then in it goes. And again, you can see how it drips off there. I'm touching the solution. I wanna encourage those roots to grow down. As the plant consumes the solution and as some of it evaporates, what will happen is that you'll create a gap where the roots grow down and you have an inch or two in this case, potentially as much as half of the jar as the plant matures that I will keep as a humid air space for the air roots to develop and get the plant the oxygen and the carbon dioxide that it needs, right? So you don't want to keep refilling your container because you will drown your plant if you go all the way back up to the top. So this container will never be this full again. Important. Passive hydroponics like the Kratky method rely completely on letting that solution drain down and creating that air gap. If you don't have that, you will absolutely kill your plant. If you refill your solution too high, in this case, I will have to refill this container because it's so small. I will drown the plant if I'm not careful. That's one thing that you have to be very mindful of. Um, the lettuce, I'm planning on those containers being all it needs for the life of that plant. But the tomato is probably going to be a little bit more demanding. And I know I'm going to switch it over to the bloom formula in a couple of weeks once it's really established itself. So that's all there is to it. This is ready to go. I'm gonna put it under my grow lights in my grow tent, but you can put it under any kind of grow light that you have. You don't have to have it in a tent. I'm gonna fill the rest of my containers real quick. The whole five gallon bucket, I am going to make as its own batch of nutrients and then just drop the net cup in, piece of cake. Okay, I have filled all my containers and put all of my rock wool cubes into the net cups. So these guys are ready to go under grow lights. I'm not gonna have to do anything for a while. I'm gonna check on them every day because that's what we do as gardeners, right? But the whole point of this is to let the nutrient solution feed the plant. And these are pretty low maintenance. Next week, we'll talk about a few things to watch out for and some quick tips to help you deal with problems you might see arise throughout your grow. But the last thing I really wanna do here is a little more algae control. So if you remember, I recommended having these hydrotin or LECA or clay pebbles, whatever you wanna call them. They can be used to support the plant. They're also really helpful to go on top of the rock wool to block out the light, which can cause algae to grow on the rock wool. Again, not super dangerous to your plant, but it looks gross. You don't want to have green rock wool. So I'm just going to take these and put them right on the top. And be careful with your seedling there, of course, but the more of that light you can block out, the better. So let me fill the rest of these. So that's pretty much gonna wrap us up for this week. A couple of key things to remember. Follow the directions on your nutrient solution. If you don't use the same one I'm using, don't assume the instructions are the same. Another thing to keep in mind is that when you put your net cup in, make sure, especially if you don't already have roots coming out of the bottom of that rock wool, 
that the neck cup sits and touches the solution so that there is a chance for it to uptake into the plant, those roots will start growing really fast. And then lastly, get them under good grow lights. They should have already been under grow lights as they germinated, but if you haven't and you've somehow gotten by and you don't have really tall leggy seedlings, get them under grow light right away. The growth is gonna take off, especially on those lettuce, we'll see it the fastest. Now that they've got that hydroponic nutrient, the plant has a constant supply of what it wants to grow big, healthy, and delicious. We'll check back on them here in about a week and I'll come back with another episode. Until next time, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. Peace.